Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. Now continuing with our test automation obstacle topic, let's look at our next obstacle, which is called the last row. Now in this particular obstacle, uh, we need to uh, verify that the last row in the table displays an order value. And then we need to take this value and put it on the text field. Okay, so for example, if this is the table, then we need to grab this particular value here and then we need to enter it right here and then the obstacle will be completed. Now, take note that this uh, table is dynamically getting changed. So this uh, value won't be constant. Neither the number of rows will be constant, right? So this is very similar to the last obstacle where we found uh, the number of rows which are present in a particular table and then enter it into a text field. Here we need to uh, verify and grab the last value of uh, this particular table. Okay, so let's see how we can do this in Tosca. So coming back to our Tosca workspace, uh, let's go to our module section and here we will go to obstacles and here we will be adding a new module, right? So let's scan the application. And here uh, we'll be adding uh, two elements. One is the table itself and then uh, the text box, okay? So these are uh, the two elements which we want. And then let's save it and let's close it. Okay, so I'm going to rename the module first. Okay, and then uh, we are going to create a new test case under our obstacles folder uh, with the same test case name, which is the obstacle number. Okay, and then uh, we are going to select our module. So let's grab the module and let's add it here. And now uh, we have got a table and a text box, okay? So right now in this table, you can see uh, the row element and the column element. Now there are two uh, ways you can do this, okay? So we need to select the last row of this particular table. No matter how many rows are there, we always want to select the last row, right? So for this, uh, what we can do, we can use two types of um, elements which are present here. Uh, one is this last dollar, okay? So when you select this dollar last, then it will always select the last row of this particular table, okay? So whatever value it will contain, you can find it using this particular row. So once this row is selected, then uh, we just need to select the particular cell, okay? And uh, we know that it is in the value column, okay? So what I can do, I can... Uh, go here and I can check that uh, in the value column, I have got this particular value, right? So this is what I want to grab, okay? So here, uh, instead of verification, what I can do, I can buffer this particular value, okay? And then um, I can also put something here called B underscore val, okay? So this is my buffer name where this particular value will be stored, okay? And once this is stored, then um, I can just go ahead and enter it into the text box. Okay, so I can use the buffer. So B underscore val. Okay, and then um, it will be entered into this particular text box. Okay, so I'll show you the other way as well. Uh, let's first run this and let's check whether it is working or not. Okay, so I'll mark this as completed and then I am going to run this. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it grabbed that uh, particular value and it entered it into the text box, okay? Now, the other way around is uh, instead of dollar last, we can also use uh, the last content row, okay? So dollar last content row, so this will also select the last row. So you can use any of these two elements which are already part of the table row element type, okay? So now if I go ahead and run this in Scratchbook again, it will exactly do the same thing.
Okay, so this is how you can uh, basically uh, play around with uh, different row elements. So especially for first and last row, there is already a uh, option which is present uh, for the row element. You can see dollar one is always the first row. Then dollar n, you can enter any particular row number, and then uh, the last uh, the last content row would always um, contain the last row. And then you can also put, so you can also verify the headers, or you can also verify whether uh, it is the first empty row. Okay, so these are the different uh, types of uh, elements which are already present in the uh, table element type for the row element. Okay, so using this, uh, we can uh, basically find out what values are present for any particular row and we can buffer them, we can verify them, um, and then we can use it across different test steps uh, for our test case. Okay, so this is how you can basically automate your dynamic web tables uh, in your application using Tosca. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.